God told you not to buy on the Sabbath day. God told you to stop blonding your hair. God told you to, to women stop wearing pants and whoring yourself out. God told the men to stop whoring your sisters out. That's what God teaches according to the Bible. Go ahead. Pray these that have turned the world upside down. These people out here in purple right now, we're gonna turn this world upside down. Cause we're tired of the sin that goes on in our communities. We're tired of the violence. We're tired of the drugs, prostitution, low, low wages, the worst stores. We're tired of it. That's what, that's what Christ taught. Christ was sick of seeing his people in a low estate. And when I say Christ's people, I'm talking about you so-called blacks and Hispanics. Nobody else. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Go ahead. I come hither also. All right, give me uh, Matthew. Hey, my brother, listen to this. Do you think that Christ loves all people? You said he does, right? That's, that's what I was taught in church. I was taught that Jesus Christ loves all nations of people, right? But when I read the Bible, I got something different. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. So Christ went into a place of uh, African nations, okay? Go ahead. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him. So this is a woman that's not an Israelite because Jesus Christ was a, a Jew, correct? He was a, of the nation of Israel. There's a whole woman that's not from the nation of Israel, from a whole other nation, came to Christ saying, what did she, she say? Saying, have mercy on me, O Lord. She said, have mercy on me, Jesus. Go ahead. Thou son of David. Go ahead. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So this is a lady of a whole other nation coming to Christ and saying, please help my daughter because she's vexed with the devil, right? Now Christ came to deal with everybody, right? He came to save everybody, heal the sick, uh, raise the dead, open up the blind eyes, right? Let's see what Christ said. But he answered her not a word. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen real closely. What did Christ do? But he answered her not a word. Jesus Christ ignored a lady when she came to him for help. Have you ever heard that before? You never heard that, right? But keep going. And his disciples came and besought him, saying. Now, his disciples, because Christ traveled with his group, he had his disciples. You would think they would say, Christ, remember, you came to save everybody and heal everybody, right? Let's see what the disciples said. Send her away. What did the disciples say to Christ about this lady? Send her away. Go ahead. For she crieth after us. They said, get her out of here, Lord. She's annoying us. Why are you being taught this in church? Keep going. But he answered and said, I am not sent. And my brother get in that car. This is what Christ said. Go ahead. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read that part again. My brother going to the seafood store. But he answered and said. Christ said what? I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ said he only came to save the Israelites. He's not here for the Chinese, the Japanese, the East Indians, right. Arabs, Koreans, uh, white men. Right. It don't matter. He's not here for them. Jesus Christ came to die for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's how it's always been in the Bible. He never dealt with any other nation. All right? Keep going. Verse uh, 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread. He said it's not good. And my brother right here. Hey, come here real quick. I'm going to show you something. Come on. It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. He called the other nations dogs. Hey, my brother's over there by the seafood spot. Give me a uh, Leviticus 11. All right. And we're here to teach the laws of God according to the Bible. Not what your pastor says because your pastor does not teach you how to get out of sin. As a matter of fact, he condones sin. Your pastor does not love you. Love according to the Bible is keeping the commandments of God. Let's go. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. All right, so Christ, the Bible says that these are the things from the waters that we are allowed to eat. Go ahead. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters. All right, so here we go right here. What we got right here on the Sabbath day is a bunch of sin going on, right? What's going on in our communities that, what's going on in our communities every day? We got crime, violence, drugs being sold, prostitution, hatred, envy. All these things are prevalent in our communities and we're comfortable with it. My brother with the red hat, is that a sister? Hey sister with the red hat, come on over here, sis. 
No, no, look, I'm gonna show you something. Because God said you're not supposed to eat those seafood. Don't worry about that stuff, all right? That's poison to our people. That's why we have gout, high blood pressure, because we continue to eat food like that. Yep. God told us that to follow these simple laws, and we're gonna be a nation above all nations. But we don't want to do that. We're comfortable with killing each other on a daily basis. Leviticus 19 and 17. Leviticus 19 17. We're gonna talk about love. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. It says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Meaning, hey, sis, what hey, sis. Meaning, do not sell drugs to your brother. Don't prostitute the daughter. Right. Don't, don't, don't uh, be a whore, a whore monger. Don't kill, don't steal. These are things that, are, that are, uh, God tells us not to do. Keep going. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. All right, give me um, that one in uh, Judith. Judith 5 and 20. All right. We have to learn not to deal with these other nations because they're not your friends. These other nations don't care about y'all. All right. They, they want to be down with you. And tell things go tell things go south. Then they play their card, the white card. Then they could be white people again. They're down with you until it's time to go. You Shoot it. Chapter five, verse twenty. So what I'm here to prove is all these other nations don't care about you. That's going to the Bible. These other nations are here to keep you in a lower state. They never want to see you raise up. They don't think of you as equal. Right. All these other nations hate you, and they show you that every day. The way they deal with you in that store, I bet you you can't come up with that five cent short, so you ain't gonna get nothing. You've been shopping at that store for years. Owner knows your name and everything, but you better not come up short. Go ahead. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God. Now, these are other nations talking about the Israelites. He say, if there be any sin in these people, meaning if, these, if the nation of Israel continues to break sin, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. They even know when we're in sin that we're going to be a destroyed people, where we're going to be at the bottom. Our mindset is not going to be to serve the Lord. Go ahead. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. That's how he said, we shall overcome them. It didn't say they're going to sin, and we're just going to fall back and watch it happen, and then we're all equal. They said, once they fall, we're going to take the mantle now. We're going to go on top of them. That's what the Bible said. These other nations don't care about you. Go ahead. Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, if there be no sin, no buying on the Sabbath, no prostituting your daughter, go ahead. Let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them. So the nations know as long as we keep the commandments, they can't touch us. But as long as we continue to break the laws of God, like putting hair on your head that has nothing to do with you. Right. You blind your head and look like your other, give me Proverbs 3. Look, you putting blind your head and like the other nations that hate you. You continue to eat shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. You're over here buying it and defiling your temple with cigarettes. Hey. With these other nations put in your communities. You put abortion clinics in Mosby. That's sin. Killing your babies is sin according to the Bible. Right. Nothing cute about it. Right. And we do it by the thousands. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. It says, envy not thou or oppress not thou the oppressors. Meaning don't follow in the ways of the people that hate you. Go ahead. And choose none of his ways. And the ways he chose are against the Bible. When God said, don't cut a tree down, decorate it with silver and gold and put it up and call it Christmas, that's what the other nations do. He told you not to do it. Right. God told you. For, for the women not to dress like men, meaning put on pants. He told you men to stand up boldly, not to put on a dress and walk around prancing and stuff like that. God taught you not to sell drugs to your brother. And if you do and if you do see somebody doing it, you tell on them. Lest the, the land's gonna fall to hoard them. That's what it says in the Bible. Go ahead and read it again. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his way. Hey, my brother over there with the, with the blue phone, come over here real quick, man. We're going to teach you who you are according to the Bible. Not to deal with these other nations that hate you, all right? These other nations don't care about you. They are glad that you continue to push drugs in your communities and shoot each other up and, and play the whore. They love that. They, they think of you as a laughing stock. Give me 1 Kings 9, all right? I, everything, I'm, everything I'm saying, I'm going to prove out the Bible. The other nations know that once you continue in sin, they're going to overtake you. You're going to have to go to them for the want of everything. We're getting that next. 
First Kings 9, start about first uh, five. First Kings chapter 9, verse 5. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom. Verse 6. Verse 6. But if ye shall at all turn from following me. So God says, if you if you turn away from keeping my laws, go ahead. Ye all your children and will not keep my commandments right. and my statutes, which I have set before you. Go but go and serve other gods. These other gods are the things that you see right here. Other gods is making yourself a god, celebrating your birthday. These other gods are celebrating Christmas. These other gods are eating seafood or doing what the other nations do. Hey, sit right here with the pink. Sit right here with the pink. Come on over here. I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to teach you something that you did not know about this Bible. I'm going to teach everybody something that you did not know about this Bible. Keep going. And worship them. Excuse me. Worship goes into continuing to do it. Worship becomes a habit. Worship is an addiction. You worshiping this idol. The idol could be anything. It's whatever sin is, and you turn to it, that's what you're worshiping. Go ahead. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land. We're cut off right now because we're in the worst parts. We're not in our homeland right now. In our homeland, we was rulers. We was over all the other nations. They were subject to us. They made payments to us. All right, keep going. Then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and this house, which I have hallowed for my name. Because he hallowed this place for our name, the place, on, the place called Jerusalem. Go ahead. Will I cast out of my sight. And that's why we went into slavery. We was chased out of our homeland, put on, put on ships, and sold all the way across the world because we broke the laws of God. Go ahead. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword. That's why you're called niggas today. That's why y'all are called lazy. Drug dealers, smugglers, the worst of the worst, because we brought the laws of God. God put that power on us because he knew once we go away, we're not going to be his people. His people is the best thing on this earth. Right. Anything other than being the best is the worst. Yeah. Go ahead. Among all people. Among all people. That's why I say all nations had a hand in our captivity. Right. All nations hate you. There's no such thing as a good white man or a good Arab man or a good Chinese man. They all hate you. Go ahead. Verse 8, and at this house, at this house, the house of Israel, which is high, everyone that passes by it shall be astonished. They're astonished right now. Go ahead. And shall hiss, and they shall say, why hath the Lord done thus unto this land? Go ahead. And unto this house. The house of the Israelites in this land is talking about us, all right? What happened to us? Us being at a high estate, why is it that... All the hoods and ghettos are populated by our people. That's what we had to ask ourselves. Why is it that a man is over there right now, strung out on drugs, losing his mind, and nobody's saying nothing? That's why people are astonished. All right, because you don't see that other in everybody's communities. Well, it, it, that don't happen. If, it, if that happened in the white man's community, they're going to clean them up real quick. They get them off the streets. Trust and believe, as you see a couple women, high skirts, it's dark at night, right? It's late at night, around 2, 2 a.m., and they're walking down the, the rich parts of the neighborhood. They're going to be arrested. They're getting that out of their communities because they don't want prostitution ruining their communities. But they're okay with it being in your communities right now. All right? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Strong in the Lord!